Hello, welcome to the Harlan Institute Consors Virtual Supreme Court Competition, COVID-19 version. Um, this year we are presenting under unusual circumstances where all of our teams are remote. Um, as a result, teammates are not together, but we can handle this quite well, I think, using, uh, 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 using technology. Um, the first match we will have today is from Judge Barefoot Sanders High School uh, here in Texas. Um, they'll be arguing the case of Espinoza, which considers the Establishment Clause and funding for religious schools. Um, the first team will be uh, the petitioners, which is Antonia Davis. Okay, say Antonia. Okay. And her teammate is going to be Nick Johnson. Nick, say hi for a minute. Hi. Thank you. And I'm grateful to their teacher, Mr. Seal, who has been an excellent coach throughout this entire process. Um, I'd like to introduce my partner from Consource, uh, Sebastian, uh, who helped me judge the competition today. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so the, the way this competition works is that each team will get 15 minutes and five minutes of rebuttal time. Okay. We will begin the arguments with the petitioners, Antonia and Nick. And you have 15 minutes. I will keep time and let you know when you're running short. You can begin whenever you're ready. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Antonia Davis. And my name is Nicholas Johnson. And today we will be representing the petitioners, the Espinosa family. <clears throat> Would you like a brief statement of the facts? Yes, please. In 2015, Montana proposed um, a scholarship program called Big Sky, mm -hmm. where taxpayers could use a $150 tax credit to give to Big Sky for parents to use to fund a school of their choice so their child could go to. Big Sky afforded these programs, these schools for anyone, even religious schools. But Montana saw that mostly religious schools were going through Big Sky, like about 92%. And Montana had a law that said that they would not fund or support any religious activity directly or in. On there. Denying a generally available benefit solely on account of a religious identity imposes a penalty on the free exercise clause of religion. Montana forces the parents to choose between their religion and being able to participate in the student aid program. To condition the availability of benefits upon a recipient's willingness to surrender his religious impelled status effectively penalizes the free exercise of his constitutional liberties. I said in McDaniel v. Payton. Thank you. Uh, Counselor, uh, if, I, if I could ask you a few questions, uh, and this is for e either, either attorney, do you think this case is primarily about the free exercise clause of the First Amendment? Or is this case yeah. about the establishment clause of the First Amendment? Which which provision the Constitution is more important for this case? The provision that is most important for this case is the free exercise clause. Okay, tell me why. Um, it is most important in this case because Montana is denying parents the freedom of exercising their religion and choosing what school they can send their child to mm -hmm. by disbanding Big Sky because they afford them the choice of sending their children Okay, I think Antonia broke up there. Um, um, 
I I apologize. Um, if you'd like me to go into my argument, I can. Yeah, Nick, please. I, and when, if Anthony comes back in, maybe your signal will reconnect. Okay. So the first thing that I want to look at is Trinity. The first case that I, I would, would like to bring up is Trinity Lutheran, um, which states that the government, let's ha- say, has to give these schools taxpayer money because they're not using the money for religious purposes and the state is giving money to secular schools. And Trinity Lutheran, the facts are that they were recycling rubber to give to schools for playgrounds. And when a religious school asked for these rubber for playgrounds, they said, no, we cannot give them to you. And the court decided that, yes, you have to, because if you're giving it to one school, you have, if you give it to one school, you have to give it to all the schools. And also there are are not they are not using these playgrounds for religious purposes these schools were not going out on these playgrounds to do anything remotely religious the second precedent stated was well their religious purposes if the school is not using money for religious reasons then it is completely legal to give them this money the money isn't being given to the schools so that they can teach about god the main purpose is to give these children a basic education if the true reason of giving these students these scholarships were so they can learn about God, then non-religious schools wouldn't the non-religious schools wouldn't be represented in Big Sky. But as we see in Big Sky, the scholarships are not only be, being given to religious schools, but also being given to non-religious schools as well. It's not just one it's just a bunch of religious schools. If the Montana Constitution Article X, Section 6, interpreted to bar religious options from student aid programs directly violates the precedent set by Trinity and in doing so violates the First Amendment free exercise clause of religion. Montana's blatant requirement of all of its organizations to exclude religion from anything that gives resources completely disregards the First Amendment and should be overruled. Okay, so uh, Nicholas, let me ask you a question. Um... When a scholarship is given to um, one of these religious schools, are we sure that the money won't be used for religious education? Are we are, the money won't possibly be used for some sort of religious study? Are we are we certain about that? Well, while we're not exactly certain about that, we have to look at religion as religion isn't a core class like math or English would be. Religion is kind of more of an elective class. It's kind of like how if we're giving these scholarships to non-religious schools, some kids could use it for theater, or some kids could use it for choir. Some kids might be using this for a religious class and we can't we can't exactly we can't exactly say that, oh they're using these for religious reasons. We can't say that because we don't know what these kids are doing with mm-hmm. this money and these scholarships. So to say that they're using them for religious purposes, while yes, they could be, it's not, it's their option. It's exercising religion. It's exercising religion, which is what, which actually goes into my second argument of James Madison. The James Madison Memorial and remonstrance against religious assessment states that religion states the religion then in every man must be left to the conviction and conscience of every man it is the right of every man to exercise it as they may dictate meaning that the choice of exercising one's religion or not doing so should be left up to that one man alone article x section six let let me let me let me interrupt and ask you what was madison writing about in the memorial remonstrance what was he worried about in, in in that famous document was he? What, what, why did Madison write the Memorial Remonstrance? You, you brought up a very good primary source, but what was that documented about? What was Madison writing about? Madison. Madison was writing what I think. I think he was writing about the. I think Madison was writing about the 
I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question. Oh, it's okay. I, I, let, 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 me, let me give you a little background. Maybe this can help explain it. Um, in Virginia, uh, Virginia was considering a law that would have imposed a tax on the people. And the tax would be used to fund houses of worship. And people could use that money to fund whichever house of worship they wanted, right? And Madison wrote this document because he was worried that the state was getting too entangled in religion. Um, isn't Montana doing something similar? Isn't Montana saying, let's not get the state entangled with religion. Let's, let's have a separation of the church and the state. Why can't Montana do that in this case? Well, Montana can't do that in this case because the separation of church and state that they are trying to make here is virtually indistinguishable. Um, they're trying to say that they can't promote any form of religion, whether it be directly or indirectly, but the way that they're going about it, there's no, it's not narrowly tailored mm. to what they're trying to achieve. They're, they're not letting anyone go to anything that is religious. They're not promoting anything religious, no matter what it entails or hopes to achieve. Mm -hmm. When in reality, the separation of church and state, the line is very thin. Very good. Well, they won't come back. I'm sorry, I had some technical difficulties, but I'm gl glad you were able to come back in. Um, Anthony, let me ask you a question. Tell me about the case of Zelman versus Simmons Harris. You mentioned that one in your brief. What's that case about? Zelman v. Zelman v. Simmons Harris was about. I hate Wi-Fi. Um, I can. Yeah, Nick, you want to jump in if Ant and Anthony comes back in, we can we can bring her back. And I'm sorry, she's having some technical connection problems. Yes, Zelman v. Simmons Harris was about uh, the Cleveland City School District and giving vouchers to student to students. Um, oh. Pretty much, what happened in that case was there was Cleveland was trying to give voucher city students to these students and they weren't exactly giving them to religious students. And what the court said was that they could give them, could give them if they wanted to, but it was not required. Uh -huh. This was, this was possible because supporting religion was a secondary result of the primary goal, which was promoting education. And as I said, and as I said in my earlier argument, that's also what we're doing in this case. We are promoting education. Learning religion is a second result is a second right. result after getting these kids through high school. Um, we're looking at this case because it's very similar to ours with both schools giving monetary aid. If in Zelman it is permissible to give vouchers to students, then it is fine for the program Big Sky to give scholarships to the parents who plan to send their children to either religious schools or secular schools. Oh, that's very and, good. And, and actually, I see Antonia, you're back. Antonia, did you have anything you want to add on Zelman Harris? I, I'm sorry, it keeps cutting out your signal. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, boy. Um, all right, Nick, um, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll just have to, we'll come back to maybe during the rebuttal, during the rebuttal period. Nick, why don't you tell me about one more case? Talk to me about Locke v. Davy, please. Locke v. Davy? Yes. So in Locke, it proves that Montana, Montana Constitution's Article X, Section 6 cannot hold up under constitutional pressure. Although in Locke v. Davy, the court ruled that religious exclusion was acceptable under the Constitution because it was narrowly tailored, the case also stressed that exclusion reflected reflect no hostility towards religion does not require the students to choose between their religious beliefs and receiving a governmental benefit and is justified by a historical and substantial state interest. Article X, Section 6 does not hold under two of the four requirements. The interpretation that bars religious options is not narrow and it makes students choose between their religion and government assistance. Mm -hmm. The law is not narrow because it bars all religious options, no matter what they entail or hope to achieve. A law cannot be narrowly tailored if it bars any form of religious sex to be excluded from receiving government aid. Well, let, let me ask you a question. Um, how is the scholarship in this case 
different from the program that was unconstitutional in Locke? How, how, how are they different? How are they different? Yeah, in Locke, they declared the policy was unconstitutional. How is the policy here different from the policy in Locke v. Davey? Well, in Locke v. Davey, well, in Locke v. Davey, if I'm correct, that is the... If I'm correct, Locke v. Davey, if I'm correct, Locke v. Davey and the law in Locke v. Davey was we cannot... They pretty much said we simply cannot support religion when giving. We can't. We can't simply support religion when it's being used by everyone else because of, well, certain reasons. And here, and here, it's not us asking them for. It's not us asking them. Hey, can we have all the money? And can we have all the money for our schools versus in Lock B. Davy, they were asking for all the money. And here we're not asking for all the money. I mean, we're, there are religious schools getting these scholarships and there are non-religious schools getting these scholarships. So in Lock, Lock B. Davy, that's how it kind of okay. different. Okay, you have about 40 seconds left. If you want to give a closing statement, please. I want to give a closing statement. But, but yeah, but 30 seconds left. You want to wrap it up. Mm, in conclusion, we pray that this court reverse the Montana Supreme Court's decision and allow families to continue using scholarships the way they see fit. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Nick. And Ariane, I'm really, I'm sorry, Anthony, I'm really sorry your uh, your 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 connection is not so reliable, but uh, we I think we heard a lot of your arguments. All right, we'll now have 15 minutes from the respondents, uh, uh, Brooke Sanchez and uh, Avery. Uh, who, who's going to be going first? Okay, Avery, if you want to put yourself off mute, and Brooke also put yourself off mute, and you can be begin whenever you're ready. All right, may it please the court. My name is Avery Rose. And my name is Brooke Sanchez. And together we represent the respondent in today's case. Now, the petitioner has already addressed the facts of the case. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask us and we will be sure to address them. For now, we will begin our arguments for which we have three. You may. Now, jumping into our first argument, it's that the Montana Supreme Court did not discriminate when ordering the termination of the Big Sky Scholarship Program. Now, under Trinity Lutheran, religious discrimination is created when an entity is forced to choose between maintaining its religious status and receiving a government benefit. While Trinity Lutheran sees a state-run organization deny religious schools government aid, today's case sees the entire program abolished. It removes religious and non-religious students from accessing the Big Sky Scholarship Funds. Now, the petitioners were not forced to choose between their status as Christians and receiving a reduction to their tuition fees because the Montana Supreme Court eliminated the choice for all families, regardless of whether the money was intended to go to secular or sectarian schools. In contrast to Rosenberger v. Rector, in which a religious organization was denied the ability to print a newsletter, and Widmar v. Vincent, where a uni university policies were discriminatory, deemed discriminatory due to restrictions only applying to religious organizations, today's case sees religious and non-religious organizations treated in the exact same way. There's no discrimination when all parties are viewed equally in the eyes of the law and denied the exact same aid. Now that goes into our second argument, is that Article 10, Section 6 of the Montana Constitution is not unconstitutional under the Free Exercise Clause of the First Amendment. Now the state of Montana has chosen to create a constitutional provision that respects the U.S. Constitution while protecting its own interests. Article 10, Section 6 of the Montana Constitution prohibits the state from giving direct and indirect aid to any religious institution. Now, as cited in Joseph Story's commentaries on the Constitution, the whole power over the subject of religion is left exclusively to the state's governments to be acted upon according to their own sense of justice and the state constitutions. This is still justifiable in today's sense through the incorporation theory, which makes the First Amendment applicable to states through the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. In determining the broad generalization of liberty is related back to the elements of the First Amendment, one of which being one of the freedom of religion. The First Amendment establishes a distinct wall between church and state. The wall is porous 
allowing for certain specific measures to pass through. No state is permitted to break down this wall. However, states are able to raise and strengthen the wall if they believe it to be in their best interest. Well, counsel, let me, if I, if I can interrupt for a minute, um, <clears throat> I think you describe a very good analogy that there's this wall between separation of church and state and the state can raise the wall. That is, you know, build a bigger wall, as they would say today. Um, do you think that raising that wall might create free exercise problems? In other words, <clears throat> in other words, does does the state trying to force the separation perhaps infringe on free exercise? And let me make this question more precise. If I lived in Montana and I wanted a scholarship for, you know, a regular private school that was not religious, I would get the money just fine. But if I want a scholarship for a school that's religious, I can't get it, right? Does raising the wall itself create free exercise problems? Well, in certain cases, it can. However, in today's case, in which we have not, in which we've eliminated the entire program, that's not the case. People who are choosing to go to parochial schools and normal private schools, they're both being treated in the exact same manner. So it's not discrimination in the sense that has been established through Trinity Lutheran and many such cases that have been held in this court. But Counselor, how can you tell me they're being treated in the exact same fashion if some schools are getting the scholarships and some schools are not getting the scholarships? That doesn't seem equal to me. Well, they are being treated in the exact same fashion because the entire program was eliminated rather than handing out scholarships specifically to just private uh, private non-parochial, non-sectarian schools. The entire Big Sky program was eliminated, and that's not discrimination because both people who are going to religious and non-religious schools are being treated in the same way. Ah. Well, let, me, um, let me ask a follow-up if I can. How is this different than Trinity Lutheran? In Trinity Lutheran, didn't the court say that the playground should be able to receive the same uh, funding as the you know, non as a non-religious playground. Why, why is this different from Trinity Lutheran? Well, Your Honor, this is different from Trinity Lutheran, seeing as the court said that the that the government must aid the program if it wishes to continue, and also the program. This is how it distinguishes from our case today because the tire scraps they were not going to directly promote the children to religion, but in our case. The government aid, if it were to be handed to religious and non-religious schools, it could possibly be educating students on the subject of religion. There, like our co-counsel said, it is not. It is not certain that the students will or will not learn religion, and as we can see, Stillwater's Christian school will have a direct way to inform students on the subject of religion. Well, I'm not so sure. Let's talk about Trinity Lutheran for another minute. This was a religious school. Um, there was a playground, which I guess keep people play. Um, you know, isn't one of the reasons why you have a playground at a church is to attract people, right? It's to uh, make people more willing to go to the church, find some more friendly environment. Doesn't having a playground um, help uh, improve the church's religious mission? Well, Your Honor, the... The playground and the tire scraps were to better better protect the kids' safety and the well-being. The court decided that there was no entanglement in religion mm -hmm. when you are simply just going to be providing tire scraps for the well-being of children. It's a higher purpose rather than promoting religion. Okay, very good. All right, you may proceed with your argument. Actually, I have a quick question clarifying um, your first and your second argument. So your first argument, you make an interesting point about how the Montana Supreme Court invalidated the entire program. So there's no discrimination towards either secular nor religious schools because no one's getting any money. You go on to argue in your second point that uh, because of the Establishment Clause, the, no, the non-aid clause would have been admissible anyway. Say if the Montana Supreme Court had instead of invalidated the entire program said, actually the program is totally fine, including the no aid clause, including rule one. Is that the argument you're making in addition? That regardless of whether or not the Supreme Court had struck down the program for both private, uh, secular and religious schools, this was still a legitimate program? Well, Your Honor, we're saying that because of Montana 10, 
you cannot, that entire program was deserving, to, it deserved to be in completely invalidated. It handed money off to religious schools that were in, that were in direct, that was in direct violation of Montana 10, which is why the Montana Supreme Court decided to abolish the entire program. Sure. Well, even after they had issued rule one, would you, is your second argument saying that given that after rule one, they were not giving money to religious schools, was that now considered legitimate in your eyes and your argument? No, your honor, as the Montana Supreme Court said, the entire program still deserved to be completely abolished. That's why it ultimately happened. Had we decided to discriminate, had we decided, had Montana decided to simply exclude the, to simply exclude religious schools from the program, that would have been, that would have been much more of an issue. But instead, we've, we are arguing time and time again that because the Montana Supreme Court decided to abolish the entire program, that was well within its rights to do so. And that ultimately avoided a much larger issue. Okay. Thank you, counsel. All right, counselor. You know, this court held, the Supreme Court held in Lockwood v. Davey that Washington's strict no aid clause would not violate the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. The court ruled that because the state was not forcing people to choose between their religious beliefs and receiving a governmental benefit, the no aid clause did not violate the free exercise clause. And now this court also ruled that the state had a compelling state interest, stating given the historic and substantial state interest at issue, we therefore cannot conclude that the denial of funding for vocational religious instruction alone is inherently constitutionally suspect. Applying this to the issue in our case is that Article 10, Section 6, which is similar to the Washington constitutional provision in Locke, prohibits the state from directly and indirectly funding religious schools. Now, Montana's constitution is not forcing students to choose between their religion and receiving a government aid. Now, the state of Montana has a compelling state interest. It is to protect public education. And as held in Locke, the state has the right to do so, making Article 10, Section 6, constitutional provision constitutional. And that leads into our third argument, that the petitioners want us to reinstate Big Sky, which would force Montana to fund religious schools. Now, regardless of whether a state may exclude private schools providing religious education from a general aid program for private schools, a state is free to offer general aid or no general aid at all. Trinity Lutheran only requires a state to hand out aid if the program were to continue. The court ruled that in Trinity, Trinity used the government aid to promote the safety and well-being of children, whereas in our case, the school's primary use for the government aid was to promote religious education. Counselor, counsel, let me, if I can interrupt you briefly, can you talk about Zelman Harris for a minute and how that case affects your argument? Well, Your Honor, Zelman v. Simmons Harris. Oh, I'm sorry. I said it wrong. It's Zelman v. Simmons Harris. You got it right. I'm sorry. I got the name wrong. But thank you, counsel. You're exactly right. In Zelman v. Simmons Harris, this court decided that it was possible that they, that states could, in fact, give money to religious schools if they decided to do so. In, whereas in this case, the Montana Supreme Court in the Montana Constitution under Article 10, Section 6 has specified that they want no part of handing money to religious education. In this case, the Montana Supreme Court has held that the free exercise clause requires no inclusion of funding religious education. Well, let me ask, let me ask you one more question, counsel. You're running about three minutes left. Let me try this question. Maybe the Montana Constitution is unconstitutional, right? Maybe Article 10 of the Montana Constitution itself violates the free exercise clause. What's your response to that? Maybe that this, this state comma provision is itself invalid. Well, for that, we point back to Locke v. Simmons Harris, excuse me, to Locke, to, we point back to Locke, Your Honor. So in Locke, in Washington State, they also have a similar no aid clause to the one that is being talked about in today's case. And in Locke, they, this court decided that the no aid clause was perfectly fine under the eyes of the U.S. Constitution 
and could be applied to the Washington Constitution as well. So that's our main argument for having for the constitutionality under the U.S. Constitution for Article 10, Section 6. Okay. You have about two minutes left. If you want to move towards your conclusion, I would be happy to hear it. Now, in this case, the Montana Supreme Court has held that free, the free exercise clause requires no inclusion of religious education. The option is left in the hands of the state. James Madison said in his letter, Memorial and Remonstrance Against Religious Assessments, the just government instituted to secure and perpetuate it needs them not. Such a government will be best supported by protecting every citizen in the enjoyment of this situation with the same equal hand which protects his person and his property by neither, the inva by neither invading the equal rights of any sect nor suffering any sect to invade those of another. The Montana Supreme Court cannot be required to validate this Big Sky Program agreement with James Madison because it would force Montana to, to discriminate against religious schools. And that wouldn't be in accordance with Montana's own constitution. That would ultimately hurt, that would cause the state to invade the rights of religion to people and invade the establishment clause. In summary, this case does not meet the standards of discrimination set forth in the rulings of Trinity Lutheran and Locke v. Davey. The Montana Supreme Court constructively formulated the ruling of, dis of disbanding the Big Sky Program, citing that it violated Article 10, Section 6 of the Montana Constitution. Petitioners argue to say that this, pro this provision violated their First Amendment rights. This, however, does not violate the Free Exercise Clause of the United States Constitution because the Montana Supreme Court decided to dissolve the Big Sky Tax Credit and Scholarship Program in its entirety rather than strictly discriminating against religious schools and the students uh, wishing to attend said school. All right, Counselor. And furthermore, nowhere in the United States Constitution is any state, including Montana, required to give aid to religious schools. It's permitted but not obligatory, meaning dissolving the Big Sky Program was not unconstitutional. Lastly, the petitioner's argument provides a slippery slope for the U.S. Constitution. It simply would not stand for. Reinstating the Big Sky Program would establish a dangerous precedent, excessively entangling religion in state matters. And with that, we pray that this honorable court affirm the lower court's decision and find in favor of Montana in the case of Espinoza v. Montana Department of Revenue. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much, Avery and Brooke. Uh, now we have five minutes rebuttal from the petitioners. Um, uh, 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 Antonia and, and Nick. Uh, uh, I don't know if Antonia was able to come back in, uh, but Nick, you can proceed whenever you're ready. I think you're on mute. There you go. May it please the court. Um, what opposing counsel stated when they first began arguing was that uh, Montana 10 does not discriminate against religion. And they do. That's the whole purpose for the law so that religion does not get money from the government and this is unconstitutional under under lakumi under lakumi the precedent set in lakumi was that we cannot make laws discriminating against a certain religion and here we might not be, be discriminating against a certain religion but we are discriminating against religion in general Mon Montana 10 says no religion can get money. No religion can get government aid. No religion can be given money from the government. That's discrimination. You can't just say it'd be different. And this case would be so much more different if we said a certain race could not get money from the government. If we replace the word religion with a race, then it'd be different. We'd have a different outcome. This case would be already decided. We can't just say blacks can't get funding from the government. If we say that, this would be over immediately. We say, of course they of course they can. That's discrimination. So why should this case be any different? Also in this case, we have to look at the crisis of magnitude. And what that pretty much means is we have to look at what the aftermath of shutting down Big Sky would be if we shut down 
un under Reed B. Road, if we shut down Big Sky, we would be shooting these kids back into a public education system, which would cause parents to go to the courts and demand their child be put back into these private schools, which would shoot them back into the private school, and then they keep getting shot back into these public schools, so it'd just be a back and forth, back and forth. It'd just be a back and forth, back and forth thing. And hey, Nick, Nick let, let me know. let me ask you a question if I can if I can jump in for a minute. Right, so we talk about Trinity Lutheran, right, and and we talk about the the tire scraps for the playground at the church. Um, your friends on the other side said that that case is different because the playground doesn't promote religion, right? It's just just kids go to the play and they have to be safe. They have to have, you know they don't they don't get their knees scraped on 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 the asphalt, right? How how would you respond to that argument, Nick? That this is a playground and playgrounds different from religious instruction. Well. Neither are these scholarships, just like in Trinity Lutheran. They were giving these playgrounds to non-religious schools so that they can have safety. They were giving these playgrounds. Now they have to give the playgrounds to religious schools for their safety. We're giving these scholarships to these non-religious schools for these kids to get a basic education. Now we give the scholarships to the religious schools so they can get a basic education. If they want to praise God while they're at school, then that's totally their choice. It's their that they're right. That they're right as a as an American citizen. If they want to, pray, if they praise who they want to praise in school, and that's their right. We're not directly funding them. We're not giving these. We're not giving them these scholarships and, and telling them go praise God. Like, but Nick, we're not. But, but won't aren't a lot of the teachers going to be religious? Won't the teachers say prayers before class, maybe, or maybe there'll be a, a a cross on the wall, or maybe they'll be asked to, you know, uh, think about how religion affects. Isn't religion going to be a bigger presence here than it was in the playground in Missouri? I mean, yes, but at the same time, we can look at the playground that way. What if at the religious schools on these playgrounds that are going out to these playgrounds and the teachers were telling the kids to get on their knees and pray? It could be, it could be sort of like that thing, but the, prime, but the primary purpose, and that's what we have to look at. That's what's important to us. Whatever happens in a se whatever happens as a secondary result is not up to us. We can't control our secondary result, but we can control the primary purpose. The primary purpose for those playgrounds was to create safety. The primary purpose here is to give these kids a basic education. Okay. You have about thirty seconds left if you want to wrap up your remarks. So again, we pray that you we pray that you reverse the lower court decisions and allow these parents to use these scholarships as they please. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much, Nick. I appreciate it. Um, Avery you. and uh, Brooke, you have a five minutes rebuttal. You can begin whenever you're ready. May it please the court. Uh, I will be addressing first <clears throat> the basic education versus religious education argument that opposing counsel brought up in their rebuttal. You may proceed. The primary purpose of parochial schools, the primary purpose of secular, excuse me, of sectarian schools, the primary purpose of religious schools is not simply to give a, be a basic education to its students. It's to give an education based within the foundation of a certain religion. And that cannot be tolerated in this instance. Now, under the Montana Constitutional Article 10, Section 6, it expressly forbids money from being given directly or indirectly to church schools, whose primary purpose, as I said before, is to educate people through religious means. Moreover, the opposing counsel mentioned how this could be how if we were to substitute religion with race, there would be a much clearer answer to this. And they're right. If this were race, there would be a clear answer to this. However, race in the 14th Amendment and race has no bearing, race has no uh, free exercise clause and no establishment clause. But today's case instead plays in the joints as Walls versus the Tax Commission of New of the city of New York has stated and has it's and as it's been stated time and time again throughout all of our case law. Very good counselor. So 
Maybe, maybe we can return to a point before we, we were discussing on the, the Trinity Lutheran case. Um, a playground, you know, of course people go there to, to play, but you're still building a playground at a church. Your friend on the other side says, well, this is just learning math and science and history. What's so religious about learning math and science and history? Why, why is that such a, such a strong thing that, that, the, that the states had denied funding for? Well, you've brought it up in one of your questions towards opposing counsel. It's not simply that they're learning math and reading and science and history. It's not just about that. It's in addition to that, that they're going to pray every day during class. They're going to uh, see religious iconography all over the school. This school is bathed in religious. Uh, it's, it's based it's created by a religious institution, and its primary purpose is to serve that religious institution in teaching people about uh, basic arithmetic and all of these basic subjects while also having focus on that specific religion. But counsel, what about Zellman, right? Doesn't Zellman say vouchers are okay for some religious schools so long as it's being used for, you know, regular math and science and history? Isn't that what Zellman teaches us? Uh, yes, it says that it's that that money is that it is possible for that money to go to those schools. However, again, it doesn't give the obligation that this money has to be handed to religious schools. Well, what and is, in Montana let, let, where let they me, have Article Ten? Let me let me tweak. Let me wait a minute left. Let me let me tweak the hypothetical. What if Montana the government said, okay, we'll allow these vouchers to be going just toward math and science and history classes, but not religious classes? Would that would that policy be okay? Well, yes, Your Honor, that policy would be okay, seeing as Montana cannot break its own constitution. Montana 10 Article 6 will not directly or indirectly fund any religious institutions, and you cannot force Montana to break its own laws. Well, maybe, maybe Brooke will ask the same question as Avery a minute ago. Maybe the Montana constitution is unconstitutional. Maybe it makes the wall too high between church and state. How would you respond to that argument? Well, Your Honor, the wall, Montana has not broken any law, nor has it violated any free exercise of any student or parent wishing to send their child to a religious school because the program was abolished in its, in its entirety. So no no person was choose to for, was forced to choose between their religious beliefs and a government aid. So seeing as the wall is high, they have corrected that by abolishing the Big Sky program, which is the correct, which is the correct decision for the Montana Supreme Court to have made. Moreover, in Lock v. Davey, no aid clauses such as the one found here in today's case have also, they have been held up in this, in this very court, the Supreme Court. And with that, Your Honor, we once again pray that you affirm the lower court's decision and find in favor of the respondent in today's case. Okay. Th thank, you. thank you so much, Brooke. Thank you so much, Avery. Uh, thank you so much to Nick and uh, Antonia, wherever you are. Uh, uh, we are we're grateful for your arguments at the outset. Um, that wraps up this first round. Um, let me say uh, I'm proud of you all. Um, these were not easy questions. Uh, we made it very difficult for you deliberately because we think you're very smart and we think you can handle them. Th these are tough issues. Uh, the Supreme Court will probably split on this one five to four. So this is not like a straightforward question, but I'm very proud for all of you. Um, in a minute, we're going to switch and we'll let the next one come up. I'll just stop the recording and I'll just start it again. I'll do the same spiel. Um, uh, Nick, Avery, Brooke, do you have any questions for me or for Sebastian that we can, we can answer for you? Um, I have a question. Sure, please go ahead. So what, how many people, like, how long is this process? Like, how, how long could we expect if we're to go on to the next round? And oh, so uh, well, uh, Avery, we only have, uh, we're doing all the matches this week and next week. So we, we basically, I think, um, we advanced 13, we have 13 matches. So 20 something teams coming up. Uh, you guys, uh, are today. We have matches on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and also a couple matches on Monday. So basically, the next week we'll probably know. Um, 
usually what we would do in the past is we would fly the winning teams to Washington, D.C. Um, as you probably guessed, we're not going to do that this year because we're all stuck in our houses. Um, so what we what we probably will end up doing is we might do another round of virtuals where you can pair up against school a team from another school if you advance. Uh, we haven't figured out how many teams advance. That's in part due to how many teams are good, right? Um, uh, so we're probably going to have several teams advance to a semifinal round. And then we'll do a championship round um, at some point, uh, probably in April or maybe May. We, we haven't figured out the details yet. So it's very much in flux. Um, uh, in terms of the prizes, uh, usually our prizes, we fly you to New York for, for Constitution Day. I have no idea if it's even going to happen. So we'll probably do maybe a gift card or some sort of equivalent to that. We haven't, we're still figuring out the details. Um, we don't know. <laughs> I'll be honest. We, we, we actually we don't know the answer, but, but, but we'll, we'll do the we're doing the best we can, and I'm grateful to all of you sitting there on your iPhones and your laptops and your living rooms trying to do this as best as you can. Yeah, Nick, you have a question? Oh no. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, Sebastian, did you want to say something? I'm sorry if I cut you off. I apologize. No, absolutely. Um, I don't want to say. Okay. Um, uh, Brooke or Mr. Seal, anything you want to add? You're on mute, Mr. Seal. I think you're... You're muted. Yes, now I... Mr. Seal, you're muted. Okay, I'm back. Now uh, you're sorry. Yeah. No, that was a terrific round. I'm pleased with both both of my teams here. I'm proud of both of you. You did super. We, we can do a debrief uh, at another time. Um, today, uh, we, are, we are in classes today, Josh. Today is a B-Day. Oh, yeah. Today is an A-Day. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is. It's an A day. Today's an A day. So we do not have class this afternoon, uh, but we can debrief tomorrow. Okay, very good. Well, it, okay. unless there are questions, I'll stop the recording and I'll start up again and we'll let uh, the next team uh, uh, present their arguments. That's going to be Scott and uh, 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 Scott and one other, uh, Ariana. All right, so everybody else other than Scott or Ariana, um, you can stick around if you want to watch. You're welcome to, or you can sign up. Whatever you prefer, it doesn't really matter. Josh, let me ask: Are you going to make the video available to everybody? Yeah, I'll put this on YouTube later. How much later? Any idea? Uh, later today. Great. I didn't know if you meant after the rounds or later. Uh, no, today. I'll put it on later today on YouTube. Okay, okay I'm going to stop so this recording.